Here we have a very rare sight indeed. In all of nature's miracles, there are none quite as majestic as the mighty and regal Skylings. Well, 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 looks like Commander Modesty decided to grace us with his presence. Make way for magnificence. Ooh, yeah, another perfect landing, but did we expect anything less from the commander of the skies himself? I thought we'd start in vehicle vehicle mode because that's how he came out of the box, so it seemed the most practical and pragmatic way to go about it. This feels, this is heft. I like it, it's got some real weight to it. There is just so much beautifully sculpted detail. I just wish that there was something just as resplendent in its shimmering and magnificent glory that I could compare it to. Unfortunately, like, what is comparable to Skylinks? There's only one Skylinks. Now, this is not an original G1 Skylinks. This is the, the reissue that came out, I was going to say a couple of years ago, but it's probably like a decade ago now or something like that. They're a really good size match. They look so nice together, like they're part of the same fleet or something. <clears throat> you know, like this is the GT and this is the GTO. Is that a thing? I took a punt. I don't really know cars. It's interesting to look and see that Earthrise Skylinks has gotten the same darker, moodier blue swap from that 80s blue that Ultra Magnus got from his G1 self. He has a lot of ports on him to attach the blast effects, which is pretty cool, so he can look like he's under siege. Um, what I'm a little surprised and disappointed about, actually, is there's not many weaponizer ports at all. Like, I guess you could use these, and these, are, these do come off. You can open up the back, and there is a port there. There's kind of one here on the tail but you can't super get access to it when he's in this shuttle mode. It's not a deal breaker, but it would have been pretty cool to be able to uh, deck him out in just, you know, an insane arsenal of weaponry. Again, I feel like this is where we could have turned this into an awesome rolling battle station if there'd been some weaponizer ports around. Like, on the back of the wrist, it's insane to me that there's none along here. Like, why not have in the middle of these wheels two raised ones, and then you could have had another one there, and then you could have decked this out with so many weapons. But no one's here for rolling platform of doom, are they? Pretty simple to transform into his Lynx mode, so just unpeg the limbs a little bit. They're on these like half pegs, these fat boys. They hold them in pretty well. Slide it forward, slide the foot down, get some double jointed elbow going to get some real, you know, animal shape out of it. I'm sure you can hear it, but these are some really nice, strong ratchets here. Like there's no worries about him slip sliding down or anything like that. These pieces on the back, you can take them off for this or you can just leave them on, it really doesn't matter. But same deal, just unfold, get that second elbow going, get it into that cool cat shape. That's his legs sorted. The double tails, just unfold them, pretty simple. Fold down this chest piece, and then just boom, smash out this whole head section, which is a really satisfying part of the transformation to do because it's just so fluid. Every time you do it, it almost feels like it's a cutscene in the anime or something. And there we have the links of Sky Links. I really like him. He's exceptionally poseable. I was not expecting this level of posability, especially in the head. So our neck can go, you know, up and down a bit. All right, then we've got a bit of side to side action out of the base of the neck. And then the head itself is on a ball joint as well. So you can actually get some pretty good and organic feeling shapes thrown around here. What I really like about the addition of these pieces, which I'll take them off, they're completely removable. 
but I definitely prefer to have them on because not only do they add a bit of mass to the back half and lean into that feline shape a bit more, they also kind of have like the vibe of like being like jump jets, like he needs to shift into turbo, so then it's just... His limbs are really well articulated, you can go quite far out, get a big bend out of them. Uh, all of them have a really good rock, so you can get real wide if you wanted to for some like crazy, you know, savage cat, psh, Nanaki Final Fantasy VII kind of poses. <sighs> Something else that I really love that I'm sure must be a really deliberate nod, but the double kind of chest gun down here is just so like a zero. It just gives it such an awesome Zoids kind of vibe to it. Also in this mode, again, crime that there's no weaponizer ports down here, because how cool would he look if you could just smash this out with cannons or even make up like a gunner station that someone could stand at? That would just be awesome. Meow. feels good, especially this mode. Bird mode issues, but the Lynx, awesome. I will say this, I do wish that he had more distinctly clawed feet for this mode. Like the tank tread feet is pretty cool and it gives it a hell thunder tank kind of vibe, but it does also then make him seem a little bit, just, just a little bit, like he's wearing kitten mittens. Kitten mittens! Finally, there's an elegant, comfortable mitten for cats. Credit where credit's due. This space shuttle be toit, but no one's here for that. Real simple transformation on this guy. Get that neck out. Untab the wings from there. Okay. I mentioned before some bird issues. And uh, here they are. It is almost impossible for me to move this wing without it just popping off. It is not in there at all. I've had a look to see if there's any like plastic burrs or something that are stopping it, but it's just, it's just a bit weak. So anyway, bring this forward and the line it has to sit is there so that that sits up and forward, but I can't stand that. I think it's better click like that. If you actually look in the instructions, it has it at this level right up to the last step where they're like, bang, bank it forward. So anyway, click it to that level. If we come to the underside of the wing, roll that out slide that forward. It's not a terrible wingspan. I just wish we got a bigger range of motion out of them. Like I guess they can kind of come forward a little bit and you can get a little bit of a oh. Oh. click. Watch how many times that happens for the rest of the video. If we come around underneath, let's pop these legs forward. Now the instructions have them like, you know, forward and then bent. Personally, I think that looks not great. We wanna get this out of the way and just pull that, that'll unfold that tail. Fold it down out of the way and close this back up. And then you've got that there. Right, make no mistakes, this is by far the weakest of all of his modes. And I just don't necessarily think it had to be. There's some things that I think could have made this mode more functional and enjoyable. For example, these feet, I, re I really feel like if they'd been splayed more, if there'd been a way to have a wider spread, they could have looked much cooler, and then they could have worked like claws to pick up Decepticons and things like that. I also think it was a bit of a missed opportunity that this notch here, if they'd taken that out and that had been like a divot in there, uh, if they'd put that notch there, then you'd be able to use the full range of motion and then you could actually get him to have quite, quite a straight flying line.
right? Whereas where it kind of stands now, all of his body language is just a little bit casual. They're just such dorky little legs for such a cool guy. Mine, 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 mine. I think a point for the OG version is how the tail gets um, thinner as it goes along. This does to an extent, but it's a lot more ratty. <sighs> they both look pretty ridiculous front on, don't they? So let's go ahead and get these two combined into their fully formed, fully realized space dragon majesty. So not too much to do. We just want to go ahead and flip that down. Get this head around. Close that guy back up. Come around to the other side. Flip the twin tails back in. There's that half ready to go. Bird boy here. Pretty well all we're going to do is come underneath and collapse those legs back in. That is a tiny little piece of plastic that just came cracking out of one of his ratchets. This is the kind of QC stuff that everyone's been complaining about. These are such good toys. If there was just that tiniest bit more quality control. Bink. Then it's just a matter of matching up those tabs from before, so. Man, he is big. He is really pushing the limits of my set. But here we go. I'll try and keep as much in frame as possible. I want to make sure that that's connected on the back and then clip it in at the front. Oh yeah, first try. Ah, and this is what it's really all about. He just looks so good. It took you long enough. At last everybody gets to bask in my full glory. There is a pretty good range of articulation out of that neck. It gets more or less everywhere you need it to go. I'm not a Dinobot. He's just such an awesome example of um, the early days of G1 when the toys were just being licensed up from all kinds of random toy lines and franchises and manufacturers. So you end up with some real whack-a-mole characters and styles being passed off all in the same license. It led to some really creative storytelling, like, you know, that's where we get the Dinobots and having to explain why, you know, Megatron's a handgun or why Soundwave is a boombox. I think, if I'm not mistaken, Skylinks originally was from the same toy line that Omega Supreme came from. I could be wrong on that, but I think so. He's just so satisfying. There's so much heft and presence and gravitas to him. Definitely worth the hype. There's just a... F uh, man, I told you, man. I told you. This wing. God, it's so annoying. Here we are maximizing all of the weaponizer ports that we had available. Let's go ahead and take a look at his cross-play ability capabilities, shall we? So we get some weaponizer ports on his neck, as we looked at before, at the top of each leg. I think we definitely could have got another one down here on the ankle. He does have a weaponizer port on the bottom of each foot, but we'll get into that later. He is definitely not hard up for pegs to tab the blast effects onto, that's for sure. Make him look like he's well and truly taking heavy fire. And obviously get whatever combination you want going on that neck. It's very strong, so he can, he can hold up a lot of things. There's the one weaponizer peg that's inside the shuttle bay, which isn't too bad, but I would have, again, really liked to have seen it backed up by a couple on the wings. So you can use your Prime Masters in the 5 mil ports as well to add a little extra weaponizer action. We got some more pieces up here on the tail to thicken that out, give it some blades and guns and what have you. It is a shame, though, that there's no Headmaster integration. For my money, I don't think it would have been that difficult to have that cockpit lift up and then you put inside a headmaster pilot. At the moment when they're wrapping the play system so hard, I think it would have been good to have the ability to incorporate headmasters and titan masters into this playability somehow. On the underside for your micro masters, there is a ramp. You need an evac quick. No problem. Skylinks has gotcha. Just slide that back up. 
And now we've got a mini con safely tucked away inside. It tickles. With this chest compartment, at a push, I would say that you can comfortably fit two mini cons in. Mini cons. I can't help it. That's what they look like to me. There we go. There's two Micro Masters safely tucked away in Skylinx's belly. So if he weren't already resplendent enough in his magnificence and glory, he does now come with a third base mode. I guess, is it a fourth mode? Or do the lynx and the bird each count as half a mode? I don't really know. But firstly, let's just go ahead, unclip this, get the shuttle off and just put it to the side. Now this is where it gets interesting. So we want to untab these arms. Pull the arms out forward, get the feet down and around. Same on both sides. So those feet are gonna form our base. What we then wanna do is come around, pop these open here. They'll tab in, fold out the tail on each side. Then we're gonna unpeg these back legs, rotate them up, fold the foot up. Twist it around, same over here, fold it up. So this is our base there. What we want to do now is pull this piece out, fold that down, put it down in front, take the ramp that we were using before, stretch it up. Now the instructions say to have one sticking up, one sticking up, and one pegged in like a gun. And lastly, we're going to get these pieces, and ah, uh, they are really tight on mine. Ah, ah. Then using these tabs here, we're going to take our rocket and plug it in onto these stands. I do feel a little bit like the ramp is a ramp to nowhere. Like I get it goes to the shuttle and you have to use your imagination. But um, it would have been nice if there was some kind of accessible cargo bay for the shuttle as well. And like I said, even if it was just somehow fitting a Micro Master or a Titan Master inside of his head in the shuttle mode, there's just not quite as much functionality here as I would have liked to have seen for a base mode. Even if a little, a little panel folded down there for a little med bay or cargo area or something. We do also have these pieces on each side that are so that you can get the road building system going, which is apparently the deal with Earthrise. And uh, again, road to nowhere. Like, I guess it's nice that it's there. And we'll have a look in a second and see how we can pack it out and build it out to be slightly more satisfying. And lastly, just a quick look at how he goes combining with other base builder Omega Supreme, as well as Deluxe Class Ironworks. Get a couple of sound barriers in there to help fill it all out. When you see the play pattern working like this, you do start to find yourself forgiving some of the issues that you might have had with the base mode. Between the two of them, this is quite the bustling impromptu spaceport. I do, to a degree, feel like this is still a ramp to nowhere, but I guess when you put someone in there, maybe it's like they've come for a reason. Some kind Alrighty, of let's take a quick look at our boy with some friends and some foes in frame and uh, see how they size up. Unfavorably, of course. And now here he is with a few of his fine friends. I think he sizes out quite nicely with these guys. I mean, as well as you could expect, obviously no one's running inside to fly away. I mean, given how inconsistent the show models actually were, I can most definitely live with this. Here's a quick look at him alongside our last Commander class entry, Jetfire. I definitely feel like they're worth the same price point. I do, however, think the QC was a little bit tighter on Jetfire. 
But then I guess he was doing less. It's just those wings, man. Those wings. I mean, when Jetfire has super cool secret, you know, peg holders, how am I having issues getting his wings to just stay on? Embarrassing. Yeah, I fought bigger. And because it was so much fun in that one episode, They scale like I feel like they should. Say it, uncle. Say it. And that, my fine friends, is the story of how I saved everyone again. Skylinks, I think I speak for everyone here when I say we could not have done it without you. Ugh. If you get the chance, pick him up. I honestly cannot recommend this toy enough. He is so good. Be sure to like and subscribe for more of my hijinks. That was a shameless self-promotion. Well done, Commander. Let's give it up. Three cheers for Skylinks. Hip hip. Hooray. Hip hip. Hooray. Hip hip.